Hi y'all and welcome back. As I start my design series that I'm going to be going over in the next few videos on redesigning the spaces where those spruces were. Now the spruces were removed as I've mentioned if you've been following along because they had needle cast and so they were on a decline and it happened to be a rapid decline. They were also outgrowing the space. Those spruces were planted when the builders built this home back in 2005. One was placed way more closely to the home than the other and it was going to have to be removed anyway in the coming years because it would start to create damage. And the second one I had noticed also was getting way too large for the space and I was having to limit up because of that needle cast. But its roots were also starting to spread out into the garden beds around it and I wanted to stop some of that as well. So as part of this redesign of the space. I'm also going to be redoing the drip irrigation in that space. Those will be separate videos in the spring. Uh, I've spent some time trying to reorganize some of my drip irrigation supplies. Uh, as I've mentioned in some videos, if you've been following along, my drip in the front garden is kind of um, past the point where it can supply any more water. So what we're going to be doing is reworking some of those spaces um, connecting things to other valves, which I will show you that will provide separation of zones. But we're just gonna jump into it here. And I'm gonna show you a couple pictures on the screen as we're going along. The first one I'm gonna show you is just kind of how I design these spaces and what I use. And we'll just talk a little bit of that process. And so in late fall, after I had these spruces removed, I took some overhead pictures with my drone. And I also took some pictures around the sides with just my smartphone. Uh, I bring those things into Photoshop typically. If you don't have access to Photoshop, you may be able to use something else on your phone. But what I really like to do, and this is very rudimentary, is I like to find photos of the species of plant that I want to put into the garden online and then I just removed the background from those plants. And so you'll see here, it may look a little odd, but it gives you a very good indication, I think, of what the end goal is for a design. Instead of just having a drawing, like a hand drawing, uh, I like to see the textures together, the colors together, and this is an excellent way of doing that. Now, you may not have access to Photoshop. Photoshop can be expensive. I tend to be a creative person, so I have access to those tools and I buy access to those tools. Uh, Apple has a really interesting feature now. If you hold your finger down on an image that you've taken uh, or potentially one you found online, it can pull the subject out of that picture. Now, it's not always going to be perfect, but that might be something you can use to remove the background from some of these photos and play with how those would look in the landscape. I'm sure there are other tools out there. Like I said, this is pretty rudimentary for me, but I really like the results it gives. And so I'm gonna show you on the screen what the end goal of this bed looks like. And so I'm trying to obtain a red obelisk beach locally. I found a garden center that carries it. Uh, it's just that time of year where you can't really get access to anything right now. And so. I'm working out that. If I cannot get access to a red obelisk beach, I'm gonna pick another slender tree to put there. Uh, the options may be a crimson century maple, which I showed you in a video last spring where I went to Natorps, and I also saw it on display at Cultivate for Natorps display uh, in 2022 as well. So it's gonna be a really interesting selection there. I want something that of course is never probably gonna to have to be pruned. Uh, it's also not going to affect the foundation of the home, and that is also not going to grow wide enough that it's going to need to be pruned away from the home. Those are the end goals there. So we have the Crimson Century Maple, which does get a little wider and may require a little bit of redesign if I can't get the Red Obelisk Beach. There is a Princeton Century Ginkgo, I think is what it's called, and it is gorgeous, and so I think that one's also carried locally, so I'll be able to find it. The problem with ginkgos is they grow extremely slow, and so I'll need to find a bigger species or a bigger um, selection to begin with, just like this red obelisk beech. The beeches also tend to grow a little slower than other trees, uh, maybe a foot a year, and so I wanted to find one that was pretty big to begin with. The one I've selected is probably going to be six to seven foot tall, so it's not greatly huge, but it is plenty old enough, uh, and I'll show you what that one looks like because I found it at a garden center at the beginning of December. 
Right now in the photo, you can see I have the red obelisk beach in the center of this bed. This bed is roughly 14 foot, 13 and a half, 14 foot wide, and it's not a perfect circle. It's a little more oblong than it is circle, but for design that I'll show you later, I considered it to be pretty much a perfect circle. I could also adjust the size of this bed if I wanted to later. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. Uh, it could create a lot of you know, extra labor when I've got a lot of other things to do in the spring. But around the Red Obelisk Beach is a hydrangea by Proven Winners that I've selected so far called Can Do. Uh, this one is carried locally at a local garden center. I can get it from Natorps in the spring. And so I'm really excited about that one. Now Let's Dance Can Do is interesting. It used to be called Can Can and it's a new variety but they've already renamed it. So if you have Can Can in your garden or if you've seen that in a garden center, it is the same thing as Can Do. Now Let's Dance Can Do is interesting because it is a hybrid between a macrophylla and a mountain hydrangea or hydrangea serrata. And so hydrangea serratas tend to hold their blooms better, or hold their buds better for rebloom. Uh, hydrangea macrophylla traditionally does not do well in zone six because the buds die over winter. Now this is the north side of our house uh, or the northeast corner really. Uh, and you know I have an incredible hydrangea hedge. Those are hydrangea arborescents that bloom only on new wood. So I will never have issues with getting blooms out of those. But I really want to, and my goal this year is to dive into different varieties of macrophyllas or hybrids like this can do, that is a hybrid between macrophylla and serrata, uh, that will reliably rebloom for me. So a few interesting things about lead stands can do. One, it's a fairly new hydrangea, so we'll see how it's performing. Proven Winners on their YouTube website, Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs, has highlighted this shrub quite a lot over the past year and gave an update of some planted outside one of their buildings uh, and it's performed really well and set a tremendous amount of buds even though their landscape crew came through and pruned those back. You typically don't want to prune them but they were trying to show everyone how well those rebloomed and so that's an interesting fact. It's a really quick rebloomer. So in the event the buds do die back in winter you will still get blooms on it because it is a rebloomer. Uh, you may just not get those blooms until June or July. Uh, another interesting fact about it is this hydrangea macrophylla hybrid blooms all along the stem. And so typical macrophyllas bloom on a terminal bud at the end of the stem. Uh, this one can produce buds all along the stem. So you'll have your terminal bloom, but then you can also have offshoots on the same stem that will produce blooms for you. So it can be very floriferous is the word I like to use. It also has, according to Proven Winners, really interesting fall color. So that is also a really great aspect to add to your garden. Any hydrangeas, any shrubs really that offer some type of beautiful fall color, even though it may be a short period of time, uh, will give you a lot of interest as we head into the fall season. Now this hydrangea should continuously produce blooms. There probably will be a lull in summer like there always are with a lot of plants, but it will produce that first flush. Uh, then it will produce maybe a few throughout summer and then start producing more as we head into fall and the weather cools down before the first frost. Now because this is a macrophylla serrata hybrid, you can change the bloom color. So in the photo you see here, they are pink, kind of some of them are verging on purple. Uh, I'm going to try, this is not a variety that I can tell will turn blue, but it will turn purple. And so I'm going to try to add some acidity into the soil there. So the image that you've seen on the screen show them as pink because that's one of the better photos that I could find to make this uh, design here. But uh, I think if I turn them purple, it's like a very nice lavender color. I'll try and find a photo from Proven Winners that shows you that color. Now, these get three to four foot tall and wide. I've selected eight tiers, how I've designed the space, so they will be really full. One thing that you might experience with hydrangeas, macrophylla specifically, is an issue with airflow um, and disease. And so these hydrangeas are on our northeast facing side, but there's a lot of wind that comes around the house. So I think there's going to be plenty of airflow and that's not necessarily going to be a concern. These will be hit a little bit overhead with our sprinklers as well. But like I said, I think that will 
satisfy them as far as their water requirements. These are the shrubs that I'm probably going to be adding some extra emitters to. I'm going to separate off a zone just for the hydrangeas so they get some extra water. Uh, now that the spruce is gone, this is going to be a little more exposed to more sun than it had shade there, but it is still very much considered a part sun location. So because this is the northeast side of the house, it's going to get sun through lunch maybe. Uh, morning sun, I still have a tree in front of there, so it's still going to be a little bit shady. Uh, and I think this is going to be a prime spot for macrophyllas. Now I've tried some macrophyllas in my garden in the past. I don't think they've been in the best locations. I don't have a lot of shade in my garden. There's only been one major tree that produces a lot of shade in my garden and it produces somewhat too much shade because of where it's located. So as I'm getting more shade in my garden, I'm excited to be able to add more macrophyllas to my garden to trial because they do like that part sun location. So that's enough on that hydrangea. Uh, that's the variety I may be going with. It's not a definite, but I'm excited to try that one if that one is going to be it. Now surrounding the hydrangeas, you can also see some shrubs there and those are evergreens. So I wanted to add an evergreen element to this bed because there are no other evergreens. The spruce was a huge evergreen element there. The red obelisk beach is of course not evergreen and the hydrangeas aren't going to be evergreen. So I didn't want everything in this bed to be completely gone in winter. Now the obelisk is going to be a really great structure in winter even without its leaves because it's going to be very upright. Uh, it gets maybe five to six foot wide at maturity. Uh, but at the base of it, it's going to be pretty skinny. And so it's going to stay three to four foot wide at the base probably. And then it's kind of more like a vase shape as it goes up. And so what I've selected here for now, which could change, I might select a blue evergreen if I can find one. But for now, I've selected Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvitae. Mr. Bowling Ball is a really interesting arborvitae. It stays smaller. It only gets two to three foot tall and wide. It's supposed to form... Kind of a perfect ball and the image that I showed you here it's a little more uh, pancakey or oblong um, than anything else but arborvitae have done incredibly well in my garden and you know I have so many of them. I have the green giants, the emerald greens, the tater tots. Um, what others do I have? I'm sure oh, I have the little giants that have also done really well. Pretty much any arborvitae that I've stuck in my garden has done really really well in our soil and so uh, they are a plant that I can definitely count on for winter interest around here. And so I have selected Mr. Bowling Ball for now. And so that's how this design is going to shape up around those because these evergreens, I imagine, are going to be pretty small. Typically when you buy evergreens, they're going to be smaller and they grow a little slower than your other shrubs. Uh, our variety are not necessarily fall into that category. They can grow a little faster. In my experience, my arborvitae have grown a little faster, because, but I give them plenty of water in their own drip. In this picture, I also have the sun patients that I talked about in a previous video. Uh, this is the deep rose. I think the color in the picture is a little off. I think it's supposed to be a little more coral than this. Uh, but I think if I stick some other things in there, it'll look really nice. So let me show you an overhead view of this bed. So I also use Photoshop for doing this as well. Uh, and this allows me to see the spacing. And so I do this on a grid, a one by wood grid. You could find a grid online, just an image of the grid if you want to sketch stuff out. And then I draw perfect circles that are the typical max of the plant. When I talk about max, I'm talking about if it's three to four foot, a four foot circle. Now, in this case, I typically do that down half a foot, and so it's three and a half, I think, or what some of these circles are for the hydrangeas. But it gives me a really good indication of how plants are going to intermix and overlay. And so in this picture, you can see in the center, I had that red obelisk beach uh, and how much space it will take up when it gets a little larger. And then around that, I have the eight hydrangeas, which are the light pink uh, and those are the Let's Dance Can Do estimated right now. And then outside of that, I have seven uh, Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvitaes. And so right now I'm going with seven. You can see the corner of the house here in black and then just a rough sketch of the continuation of how these beds work. Uh, because the lighting in this bed over here is going to change dramatically, I'm also going to be redoing the bed in front of the window 
uh, that's to our office here. I'll talk about that in another video as well. I haven't got that one completely planned out. A lot of the plants around here in that bed are hostas. I have a ton of hostas. Now that I'm getting a little more shade in the backyard, I can move some of those to the backyard where they will do well if they're protected from the hot, hot afternoon sun. So this is kind of how this bed is shaping up so far. I'm really excited about uh, getting this process underway and some designing. So designing doesn't have to be super complicated and elaborate. You don't need special tools to do it. Uh, and everybody's take on designing is gonna be a little different. I'm a very visual person, so I like to visually see how it looks uh, with the plants in the space and also how it's gonna look uh, from an overhead view. And so I do both designing aspects for spacing because you know spacing's not a strong point of mine. Uh, I do like to cram things together, but I want to make sure that these things, uh, because these are intended to be permanent additions, that they have plenty of space to grow into their own. So this first year, it is obviously not going to look like the picture that I showed you. Uh, it is going to take some time for these things to grow in, and that's why I purchased so many annuals. And if you've not watched that video on all the annuals I purchased, go do that. But those are the things that are going to be fillers for this bed. Uh, as these shrubs and evergreens and trees grow on. And so follow me along in the next video as we talk about a redesign of the other side of the bed where the blue spruce was. I'm also really excited about that space. I've kind of incorporated some perennials into that design. Uh, I did not incorporate annuals, although there will be annuals to add to that space as well. So thank you guys for joining me. Remember, in a world full of hate, be a light and stay warm. Bye.